Welcome to this ESCO Software Solution Demonstration Series. In this episode, we will be covering ESCO Studio Toolkit for Boxes. We will be taking a deeper dive into this specific toolkit, look at some of our other recordings where we cover the toolkit for labels, bags, and shrink. All participants have been muted, and at the end of this demonstration, we will unmute for question and answer. My name is Bart Mearshard, and I will be your host today. Stay tuned for additional sessions. An event calendar is hosted on esco.com brand solutions. In today's episode, we will create the box that you see here, the folding carton showing Esco Man to the rescue for all your brand needs. Before we get to that point, however, I'm going to show you all the intricacies of the toolkit for boxes. Starting in Adobe Illustrator, after downloading Studio Toolkit for Boxes, I now have access to my plugin that allows me to quickly generate realistic 3D models of folding cartons and boxes. I can do that by going to the ESCO menu and going to the toolkit for boxes. The first feature I like to highlight is the create basic box. Create basic box, I can access from that menu, but I can also access this from the studio plugin where I have a shortcut right here. Create basic box allows you to specify a width, a height, and a depth, let's say two inches. And by clicking on these minus or plus signs, I can create panels. Keep in mind, this is a basic box as the plugin mentions. Once I am happy with the dimensions, I can set my folding angle. So as you can see here in this 3D window, you have a slider that allows you to dedicate an angle to each of these folding lines. That way you can show your customer, for example, what the object looks like inside or how the folding carton is assembled. Also here um, you can uh, go back in case you want to make changes to the dimensions. And then finally you can uh, click on the OK button to indicate the front view and save this as an ARD file. You can then place this in the document, which shows me my 3D immediately here in my design window. And using the trim box and media box, I can fit my trim box to my die and my Illustrator artboard to my trim box. So here you are in just a matter of seconds. I can create a realistic looking 3D box. And at this point, I can now start applying my graphics. Notice that as you select these different panels, the plugin will highlight the panel you are working on. Now, uh, if you double click on a panel, no matter how the rotation, Illustrator will rotate it facing forward for the designer and the designer can now start by applying art. So for this, we're going to quickly uh, open up our symbol library and spray some flowers on this design right here. As I add artwork here, you see this update button, which hints to the fact that the view here is no longer in sync 
with what I have in Illustrator. So as soon as I click on that, that disappears and I can now see my 3D as well as my graphics. Beautiful. So also you can uh, see this uh, right here uh, in a transparent mode. In case you want to select opposite panels, you can uh, do that by holding down uh, the uh, Shift key, the Alt key, and select through these panels. Um, you also have the possibility here to display what we call uh, guides, 3D guides, in case you want to align artwork uh, at a certain location. You can do that by dragging these or holding down the Option key and dragging to create vertical uh, guides. Notice these guides wrap around the entire uh, box and that makes it very easy for you <clears throat> to align artwork on different panels. So let's say you have a text box that you need to align uh, right there exactly starting uh, on that uh, line. You could do that and then you can align that artwork on uh, another panel as well. So also notice if I copy, go to another panel and paste, um, we can see now that I can use that as a guide. Okay, so some uh, very basics uh, there. Notice that I am working now in designer quality. I can also switch to my visualizer quality and I can hide these guides and hide the edges and get a good, uh, a more realistic uh, look and feel of uh, what this looks like. Notice that we can place this box also in a scene and this scene you can pick here from different uh, settings. <clears throat> so if I, let's say, want some uh, more uh, pronounced uh, light, I can do that here. And I can move the object around or holding the um, command key hang on, that is the control key, I can move the lighting environment around the object. Okay. The uh, command key is if you want to zoom in on a certain part of your design. Now, the material that was assigned to this folding carton, I can assign here using my finishing operations. And you can see that the default is an SPS board. I can double click on that and overrule the substrate by picking a different substrate. So let's say I wanna use a gloss coated paper. If I make that change, notice that I can also set the texture depth. We can go back to studio, update, and now see that I have a gloss coated uh, paper. Um, right here, you can zoom in and uh, see that a little better. So those are some of the uh, basics generating output we can do here by uh, accessing the little hamburger icon and use the export tool, or we could use the export button right here to generate an image, an image sequence, a collada file, or a Keyshot repository to hand off to Keyshot. Okay, so what about files that me as a brand owner, I receive from a designer, but the designer just used Illustrator lines. For example, here is a sleeve that I prepared ahead of this demo. Well, I can automatically upgrade this Illustrator drawing to a 3D object by using the fold uh, command option one or going into the uh, ESCO toolkit for boxes. Remember we had the uh, fold um, right here, so that opens this window. And here you can see that with this tool, you can upgrade these lines to cut lines or crease lines. So you would select the lines that you want to upgrade and assign a crease to the crease lines 
select the outer boundaries uh, and or any uh, cut line and assign cut. We can also um, check here the uh, design right there and uh, the plugin will show you if there are any gaps. The gap uh, you can set here in the uh, configure check right there. So this is the maximum gap that I am looking for. <clears throat> and this also allows you to remove double lines and split paths. So here you can see that the uh, system has shown me that I have one occurrence where I have a gap uh, that is larger than uh, 0.059. And indeed, I can see that right here. Let's hide the studio window for a second. So uh, that allows me, if I zoom out, you can see that is right there in the top right hand corner. So that can prevent me from uh, generating a, uh, a proper 3D object. So after I uh, fix this, I can now select all these lines and I can use the fold feature in here to fold up this design. I need to indicate the base panel, which I can do here. Um, I can show and close gaps and extend uh, creases right here. After I click on the continue button, just like previously, um, I can assign a folding uh, carton or a uh, board type to the material. I can still change that in the finishing operation later. So let's say we're just picking a, a very thin uh, carton or let's make that a little uh, thicker. Uh, like so. After I continue, I can then indicate the uh, fold angles. Again, I can do that one by one by selecting these fold angles and folding it like so. I can do a reset or I can select all fold angles and simply specify my uh, 90 degree fold to show my 3D object. So this is a sleeve for a product, I can then continue, indicate the front view, which I want this to be my front view, save this on my desktop here, for example, and place this back into my design. Let's go ahead and hide the original layer. And you can see now with Studio uh, that we have a nice 3D object again selecting these uh, panels right here, double clicking, and off you go to start adding the graphics to here. So a similar scenario uh, you can encounter when a customer sends you an Illustrator or an EPS uh, file, and you want to upgrade this to an Ardios CAD file to use here in Toolkit for Boxes. Um, you can do this by, again, selecting the appropriate lines in this Illustrator file. Uh, here you can easily use either the ESCO select by attribute to select all uh, lines with a specific fill and stroke um, and then collect those. Or you could use uh, a Illustrator tool to select same appearance. So I noticed right here that I selected the crease line. Uh, currently, I have a magenta uh, object, a magenta 100% uh, assigned uh, to this. Again, I can use my fold window to uh, change that to a crease. As you can see here now, um, I assigned a 100% crease to that. If um, you don't have uh, access to this uh, fold, you can always also use the swatch menu. And then if you drill down into the swatch library, you'll encounter the Ardeos CAD line types. And uh, this not only allows you to um, access uh, cut and crease lines, but also a variety of other finishing lines. Okay, so two ways to do that. 
To uh, finish this story, I'm also going to select the uh, cut lines. Let's go back to the same appearance, select the cut right here. And at this point, um, I can now either select all uh, these lines and decide to save this as an Arius cat file right here. Or I could have uh, decided to continue right here with the fold. So let me show you, I'm going to uh, export this here using my ESCO structural design plugin, selecting all these lines first uh, or the lines you want to export. The export plugin will recognize the objects that we uh, assign. So I want to create layers right here based on these Arteus CAD line type swatches. And then I want to also place that ARD file right back into my design. Notice we can export this uh, ARD file to a web center project, or I can simply export it to my desktop, which we'll do. And um, the software will tell me, hey Bart, uh, we placed this back in here, but this design doesn't have any angles specified. So I'm going to assume 90 degree angles. And that's a good choice. Thank you for that. Um, but a couple of remarks. What if I wanted to assign a different angle? And second, I noticed that the box is laying flat on the uh, surface, the tabletop. What if I want that box to stand uh, up on uh, either uh, this uh, flap right here or this area? Well, in the designer window, you can come in here and you can turn uh, this box. So selecting the panel and then indicating that the selected panel needs to face down, uh, we can take care of that. And again, using the little uh, hamburger icon here, the three lines, um, I like to refer to it as a hamburger uh, icon. Um, you can also come back here into the fold Arteus CAD file and where the system assigned 90 degree folding angles for all of them, um, you could do that. But uh, if you want, you can also then select, uh, let's say, you know, some of these and uh, in case you want to show uh, your customer uh, the content of the object that goes in here, uh, you could do that by selecting uh, these and uh, saving this as another version. Right, so the uh, front view, uh, that's fine uh, for now. We'll just uh, keep that at zero. Notice that it undoes my uh, rotation that I did earlier. So let's create a copy and uh, load this either as a scene. So keep the original in there and I can play with this new 3D as a scene or I can undo my previous ARD. So loading this as a scene right here loads this um, and keeps the original one in there. Again, I have to uh, redo my turn box facing down but you can see now that we have the new angles that I assigned previously. But I can always go back to my original, which was a uh, die example, and I can easily switch between those two. Okay, so that was uh, really starting from um, either creating a basic box or files that you receive from your customer. Now, the most optimal way to work with toolkit for boxes is if your designer or your supplier provides you the CAD file for the brand uh, SKU that you are creating. Right here, um, we're not going to talk about this for very long, but uh, here you can see that I am running Ardeos CAD and I have created a dedicated box indicating not only the dimensions, but also the dashed lines, the keep away, 
indicating which panel is which, coding free areas, bleed lines. So this is really optimized for you know the uh, second phase where I'm going to assign graphics to all of these. So the cat designer can simply upload this into WebCenter, into this cloud-based project. And then you as a designer working in Adobe Illustrator, you can go ahead and download that from that WebCenter project. How convenient is that? Now for this demonstration, I'm going to manually place it from my desktop. So right here using the place file, I can go into my hard drive and use the ARD file that we uh, created previously there in Arteos CAD. Once I place this, it is placed in my document and in my layers, you'll notice that the ARD file is totally recognized by our plugin. It respects all the layers that were previously added in Arduos CAD, such as the main design, the artwork panels, the bleed and the coding. And I can now use this information as well to create varnish blankets, for example, or to stop artwork right here at this bleed line. If there are specific things in there that I don't want to see, I can simply hide those. And again, using my studio, I can immediately see what this design looks like. In my layer menu, you probably noticed that I've already uh, have some artwork. So I prepared this ahead of time and adding this artwork and varnish uh, areas to here we can now see the first moment of truth where the structural file and the graphics meet for the first time. In a visualizer quality, this gives me a spectacular realistic preview of what this box is going to look like. I'd like to draw your attention to a few other things like the fact that some of these items right here have been uh, embossed and they become a deboss on the inside. And also uh, notice uh, the right here, the foil that was assigned to these little uh, dots right there. Again, that was done using the finishing operations. Now I promised that uh, we were going to create a, a little see-through window and place this object inside. First question I have, however, is how was I able to make this cutout window? Well, if I go back to my one of my previous uh, examples right here, the die example, or maybe even a uh, one of my earlier ones that I showed you, this one here, you can see that um, I have the opportunity here in Illustrator to easily create a see-through window by applying a cut line to this stroke right here. And then uh, again, using the structural design, I can export the selected object, which in this case is my see-through window but I can also indicate that I want to include the original ARD file that I made using the uh, simple uh, box tool in the beginning right there. Once I do that, I can then decide again to place this document in there. Let's go ahead and update this as a untitled to copy. And looking in studio right now, um, you can see that I have a see-through window right there and I can see the inside. So that's how I was able to create this uh, see-through window. So in Arduos CAD, I assigned a cut line to this object. Now, uh, creating a film and placing an object inside is really not that hard. 
For this proof of concept, I created a second Illustrator document and I'll show you in just a few minutes that there is an easier way to do that, but there's a little disadvantage. So for now, I just created a film and I assigned with my finishing operations a plastic film with a certain opacity. So 25% opaque, 75% transparent. Um, and then I also have my main design. And what I want to do now is combine that little window and place that here behind my uh, cutout. In order to do that, we are going to use the Studio Toolkit. And while we're here, I'm also going to quickly show you how I imported the actual uh, action figurine in this box. So with this toolkit, I simply went ahead and opened the main uh, carton right there, the ARD file. Second, I used the import into and imported my window into this design. When I did this, my window came in at a certain position relative to the box. So let's say that this was the position. Notice with the transform tool, I can move these objects in the proper location. Notice also that I already have two additional uh, objects that I imported. This was a collada file, uh, the uh, figurine that I imported. And again, I use the import and then I use the move tool to position these two objects. Now, as you're positioning, your keyboard shortcuts are becoming very important because we want to position this window exactly behind this folding cart. So your best friend is going to be the number keyboard. And let me show you how I did this. So with keyboard number two, I get a frontal view. With keyboard number three, I get a side view. Now I can start zooming in with control plus and control minus to exactly position this window behind the thickness of that folding carton. So going back to number two, I can move this exactly where I need it. With three, I can move it forwards and backwards. Here, I can nudge it using my uh, arrow keys up and down, left and right, to position it exactly where I want. And as I keep clicking through all the way to eight, I can get these different views. You can uh, zoom in really accurately holding down your uh, shift key. You can uh, move the object around command plus and you can see that I did a pretty good job to move that plastic window exactly behind this folding cart. Uh, command zero brings me to a total view and once you combined all these components you simply save those as a collada file. That collada file, you guessed right, we can load in here using the scene concept as I demonstrated earlier. Making some additional uh, changes to, for example, some uh, finishing operations such as transparency of a window, um, you can see that I can really quickly uh, create a very realistic looking uh, 3D without really having any 3D knowledge. The actual action figurine had a um, UV mapping and it had uh, all the graphics assigned to the different materials. So, and those 3D models uh, can be generated in any high-end uh, 3D uh, software. Generating uh, output from here, we can do again using the export menu as I showed you uh, previously. And uh, with that, um, we have the choice between image, image sequence, collada, and key shot. Um, and for the designer quality, PDF, U3D, and GITF file. Each of those might have some additional uh, 
um, options such as width, height, resolution, and transparency or not. Also, keep an eye on our ray tracing option. Um, great option to generate an even higher um, quality uh, output. Make sure to set the proper materials when you do that. Now, I told you that uh, in conclusion uh, that there was another way to uh, create that see-through window uh, a little bit easier, and that is done by uh, selecting a, a specific uh, window and then assigning the proper finishing operation to it by using the add operation and then uh, let's filter to plastic film window so you could see right here that this is a, a die cut combined with a plastic film to make a window in the area that i just defined here the plastic film material has an adjustable color and opacity. So if we make this 25% uh, opaque and we give it uh, a very, very light blue shine right there, um, I can do that at the swatch. And uh, that is now assigned to this uh, object uh, in the back. So uh, doing that, I can or I should actually update this so uh, to a um, all. Let's take this and add this to the Arduous Cat file again, including this one into the original one. So we're building up these double copies right there, placing that in uh, right here. We now have our uh, see-through uh, window. So again, that's, a, that's a, a slightly easier way uh, to accomplish. However, um, you don't really get that, uh, that exact uh, depth that uh, you see here when you, uh, when you zoom in and uh, you know this effect where you can really get that uh, thickness of the uh, folding carton followed by that see-through window. So with that, we have come to the end of our demonstration for Studio Toolkit for boxes. So uh, we uh, took a little deeper dive and showed you some more options as far as that specific toolkit is concerned. Stay tuned for additional demonstrations focusing on Label Toolkit, Bag Toolkit, and Shrink Toolkit. And don't forget to visit us at esco.com for more information around all these powerful tools.